Hello, in this video we're going to look at two versions of Jensen's inequality and then two applications, one of each of these versions of Gen uh, Jensen's inequality. So here the first one, it's we're going to let f be a convex function in, in some interval i, you know, it's a subset of the reals. We're going to let each xi be in this interval, and this is for all i. We're going to let t be a real number and non-negative and for a given n they have to sum to 1. Then, the, and then this is Jensen's inequality, f of the sum of these is less than or equal to the sum of this. So it's like you take that function into the x. Okay, And we'll prove this and we prove it by induction. So first let's let n equal 2 and show that it's true. So t1, t2, x1, x2 is less than, we need to show that it's less than or equal to this. So we take f into the x's. So t1 f of x1 plus t2 f of x2. Well this is true by the definition of convex functions. We said f is convex so this has to be true. And a quick little graphical of this, if this is x1 and x2 and then we have some function and then we have the points where they meet and then we draw a line Okay, so this piece here is f of this combination and what this does is it picks some point in here so, say here and then f of it is this value here where, where this says take that endpoint and then this endpoint and go that same distance traveling on this line and that line is always going to be bigger than G or F I mean and that's the definition of convex uh, functions there's also another one where if you know the for any tangent line then the function is always above the whole line but anyway that gives you a feel for why at n equals 2 it's true so let's assume it's true for n and show that that n plus 1 is also true so we want to show this f of n, and that goes to n plus 1, not just n. Then we break this sum up into this last term and then every term before it from 1 to n. And then we just, then we kind of multiply and divide by the same quantity, so that's 1. So really everything in here is just this. We separate the first piece and then we multiply it by a well-chosen one and then the rest of the sum. And the reason that we do that is we know that it's true from n equal 2 to you know some generic n. And um, here the tm plus 1 and the 1 minus tm plus 1 those add to 1. Right? And so we have th this is like x and this is x so we can apply Jensen's inequality for 2 to this so you take the f in and then you take the f into this okay well if we look at this piece here we have it's the sum from 1 to n of ti o you know xi over 1 minus t m plus 1 but this is not indexed, so it can come out of the sum, but if we sum ti from 1 to n, that's the same as 1 minus ti, or uh, tn plus 1. So like this piece here actually sums to 1, right? And there's only n of them. And we're assuming that it works for n terms, and so we can apply Jensen's inequality to this. And so that's what we do. This comes down, this comes down, and then we take the f into that, and we get this sum. Well, this denominator is not indexed by i, so it can come out, and then it cancels with this, and we're just left, you know, this piece comes down, and then the sum of ti xi is here. But that sum is actually the sum from i equals 1 to n plus 1 of, of this. And that's what we wanted to show. So therefore, it is proven. Okay. 
Now a second version of Jensen's inequality, and probably, I don't know if it's more, but for me it was more frequent as a statistician. We have two versions, and as a reminder that if G is convex, another definition is that, you know, pick a tangent line, a point on the line, and I'm just calling it the, the mean of X, create a tangent line, and then G is always above this line for every X. Okay, that's the definition of convex. And Jensen, this version of Jensen's inequality says the expected value of G of X is always greater than G of the expected value of X. And this is when G is concave like this, or I mean convex. And then it, the sign changes when G is concave, and concave means it goes, you know, it's the bell or the, you know, it's a bowl facing down. So let's prove this. So the proof of one is the expected value of G of X in, and um, is always greater, it's always greater than expected value of L of X. And L of X is the line. So if we look at this function, it's always bigger than this line, right? And so this line can be thought of as A plus BX, you know, for some A and B. So if we take the expected value in to that, we get this. But since this is, a, this is an, a line, that's just L of the expected value of X. You plug in that for X. But L of X at that expected value is actually G of F or expected value of X. And so this inequality holds. And so this, and one note is that this is the tangent line of G at a particular X. So that's important too. And then the opposite is always, is, is also true that it's concave down. And so there the bowl shaped and the line is always above it. So the expected value of G of X is always less than the expected value of the tangent line at X. And that's for all X. But the, the line of X is, you know, A plus B X. You know, this is for some A and B. But you can take that expected value of N, the expectation N, and then that's, uh, then this is actually just the tangent line evaluated at the mean of X. But since that's the tangent line evaluated at the mean of X, that's actually equal to the function value at E of X. And that's what we wanted to show. Okay, so we have two inequalities, and we're going to use each version. So for example one, we're going to let X be some, you know, some function and, um, you know, distributed with some F. The X's are non-negative, and we're going to show that the mean is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean. And that is a G sitting on top of that X. And so where these are just the standard definitions of the mean and the geometric mean. The nth root of the product of the X's. So here's a little proof. So, but before we start, note that F of X equal to the log of X. Oh, this X is not the same as that X. Maybe I should have called it G of X. So G of X, you know, the, basically I wanted to say that the log of, of X is concave. And that if we sum 1 over n from 1 to n, that equals 1. That's really the point of this line. Log is concave and they sum to 1. So let's look at the log of x. And the, or x bar. And x bar can be written like this, where 1 over n is in front of each x. And notice that this is concave, log is concave, and these coefficients sum to 1. So we can take that in, and, and there's an inequality using Jensen, Jensen, Jensen's inequality. So then we can factor out a 1 over n, and then we have the sum of the logs, so that's the log of the products. 
and then this end can be taken on top so it's one over in to this product but this is really the nth root of the product and that is actually the geometric mean so what we've shown now we have this so if we exponentiate both sides this inequality you know the inequality still holds but the e and the natural logs cancel and that leaves the mean is greater than or equal to the geometric mean and that's kind of a nice little proof of that using Jensen's inequality and the second one I saw on Wikipedia and thought it was so interesting that it that it was worth giving in it as an example and it is from Wikipedia and so I hope it's okay that I show it here but I'm giving them full credit and the distance between the median and the mean is within one standard deviation of each other okay so we want to prove that and notice that the absolute value is convex and the square root is concave and so we're going to make use of that in Jensen's inequality so here we the absolute value of the mean minus the median and hopefully that's less than you know or equal to sigma you know one standard deviation well here the mean is actually expected value of x and the median is a constant so really we could take that into the expectation and then since the absolute value is convex we can take it into that which is this right here now the expected value of x minus the median um, the median minimizes absolute loss so if we stick in any other value besides the median it gets a little bigger so let's stick in mu right now if mu and the median or if the mean and the median are equal of course this is equal but if they're not then this is strictly bigger now and I have a star here for in a second so now this if we take if we square it and then square root it we haven't changed this inner piece right here right the expected value of this this is actually still the same as this piece but since the square root is um, concave then we can use Jen Jensen's inequality and take it back out which says that, that, that this is less than this the square root of expected value of x minus mu squared well since this is the variance and we're taking the square root that's a standard deviation and so the mean and the median are within one standard deviation of each other anyway I just think that's such a cool little proof and and um, worth worth showing now here's a couple notes is the inequality for absolute value of expected value so going from here to here we use Jensen's inequality but in this video here which I call inequality for absolute value of expected value I have a video titled that which gives a different proof of this inequality and it's kind of worth watching and then the fact that the median minimizes this quantity and any other value makes it bigger I have a video called the median minimizes absolute loss and there's three proofs when X is continuous which is kind of a nice video for this inequality or I, I call it star well that's all I have for today hopefully you enjoyed that I sure did um, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye